Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, verse 35 and 41 to 51. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Now that anyone has seen the Father, not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The bread that he gives is for the life of the world. And it is his flesh. Let us pray. O gracious God, where there is so much emptiness, fill me with your living presence. And where words are never sufficient, Put the words of your Holy Spirit upon the hearts of all that hear. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Have you ever been truly hungry? No. I don't think any of us have. We have hunger at times, but we get it pretty quickly satisfied, don't we? It doesn't take long. But we know that there are millions around this world who live every day in hunger. And the story that I shared today from this little book is such a wonderful image of children during World War II who were orphaned, uh, left, uh, starving, uh, homeless, and as they were brought into refugee camps, uh, the beautiful, incredible idea of putting them to bed at night holding bread. Knowing that you ate and were satisfied, knowing you would wake up and the bread would be right there for you. Such is the case with Jesus the Christ, the living bread. What is it for which you and I hunger if it's not food? We hunger for love. We hunger for meaning in life. We hunger for safety and comfort. We hunger for contentment and consolation. We hunger for joy. We hunger for peace. We hunger for truth. We all have hungers of one sort or another. And when you're not hungry, it means you're satisfied. When you're full, when you have what you need, when you're content, when you're at peace, 
What is the source of that satisfaction, of that contentment, of that fullness in life? Is it the self? No, because the self self deceives. And the self is self centered. Jesus says to us as we prepare to come to this table, I am the source of your satisfaction. I am the bread of life. And if you come to me, you will never be hungry. Never. He goes on to tell the story of the Jews, of Moses in the wilderness during 40 years, how, as you recall, they became hungry. They began to complain. Uh, they began to say, why, Moses, did you bring us out of those flesh pot places of Egypt where we were satisfied with food every day in the midst of slavery. We want to go back to that place of slavery. And God rains down for them in answer to their prayers, bread flakes, manna. They eat. And they're temporarily satisfied. But they go on to a spiritual death, and they go on to a physical death. The bread that Jesus gives is of eternal significance. It's a living bread, he says, a bread that truly gives life. I'm not much of a bread maker in terms of actually making bread. I've done a little bit in my life. Anyone ever made sourdough bread? That's a living bread! <laughs> it's a living organism. you got to feed the thing. If you go on vacation, some people even take the starter with them to feed them and keep it alive. A living bread, not the same kind of living bread that Jesus is talking about. How does this bread, this bread of Jesus the Christ, give life? How does this Christ Jesus give life? How do we eat of him, take of him into ourselves as we do in Holy Communion as a very living sign that Christ gives his very self to each of us. The living bread. Maybe the bread, Ann, that we ought to make is sourdough bread. I don't know. It's a living organism <laughs> in there. But it's the sign. It's the sign that as we take in that life, as we take Christ into ourselves, we become who he is. We become who he is. To come, as Jesus says, to the living bread is to surrender ourselves to his life. To allow the living Christ to live in us. Even when there's so much in us and around us which resists that bread. Maybe we ought to practice going to bed at night with a piece of bread. Reminding us that Christ is the living bread who abides with us when we're not even aware of it, when we're sound asleep. That we can still hold Christ with us. Over the past 13 months, I've had the wonderful experience of working with a guy a couple years older than I am who is a spiritual director. Uh, there's times in one's life, in anyone's life, where one 
fills that additional need for spiritual direction. And he's been a gift to me. And I shared with you some months ago about this and that he shared with me about a saint of the church by the name of Ignatius of Loyola. Uh, Ignatius lived in 14, born in 1491. Uh, he died in the mid 1500s. And um, he began a society called the Society of Jesus. And he introduced a practice that be, has become very important for many segments of the Christian church. One that we don't practice enough, but which I want to share a little bit with you about as you come to this table to commune. And I'm going to give you a handout in a minute for us to look through, one that comes out of this book that I just referred to this morning. Um, <coughs> It's a practice called the examine. Um, in the tradition of the Christian church, one should never come to this table to commune without confessing our sins. Always been a tradition of the church that we should confess our sins, whether it's communally or privately before we come to this table to be restored, to be renewed by the gift of the living bread. Examine was a process that Ignatius suggested that Christians should enter into every evening, twice a day if you want. You could do it at noon and do it again in the evening. And it's a way of, of holding the living bread uh, in a way that examines your life for that day and how your life was lived. So, for example, it begins with the question, in what moment today did you feel consolation? In what moment today did you feel desolation? that is misery or emptiness. Other ways to ask the same question, it's the same question, just another way to ask it. For what moment today am I most grateful? For what moment today am I least grateful? How might that change your life if you did that every evening, the close of every day? For what moment today am I most grateful? For what moment today am I least grateful? Other ways to ask the same question are these. When did I give and receive the most love today? When did I give and receive the least love today? Another way of asking the same question, when did I feel most alive today? When did I most feel life draining out of me today? Another way of asking the same question, when today did I have the greatest sense of belonging to myself, to others, to God and the universe? When did I have the least sense of belonging? Another way to ask the same question, when was I happiest today, when was I saddest? Another way to ask the same question, what was today's high point, what was today's low point? You can do examine in community, you can do it by yourself. But it's a way that we at night, when we go to bed, hold that living bread. And allow that living bread to move in our lives in such a way that we can be changed. Come and receive this living bread today. And as you do, I'll give you one of these examines to take with you. In fact, um, Savannah. Would you hold this and as people come to commune and after they commune, um, 
give one to them, please. Thank you for doing that. That's what you get for being the youngest. 